Hey YouTube, Kevin Cleary here with a knife video. Today I want to talk about expectations. Before I do, I want to tell you what brought this video about. Uh, I've been working on some notes on this video for some time now, but recently a couple things happened. Number one, uh, Dr. Frankie, who I consider a friend, got a knife from uh, a custom mic maker that definitely did not live up to his expectations, and the maker has handled it really well. Uh, but in addition to that, uh, Everyday Commentary posted a blog uh, where he talked about Benchmade and the expectations of the internet knife community. And so those two things happening made me brush off these notes, blow the dust off. I did make some minor edits and uh, then go ahead and put this video out there. So when it comes to expectations, guys, I, I think um, there, there's a thought process we need to go through uh, when, it, when we are deciding, and this is something I have to do as a reviewer and you have to do as a consumer, and I mean I have to do as a consumer as well, but something like this CRKT Batum, okay, is a production knife and I have a level of expectation for this knife. Uh, same with the Rat Model 1, I, I have some expectations about that, but these are, they're different expectations that I have for say the Spider Co Paramilitary 2 or the Benchmade Crooked River. Okay, they're, they're different. These are all production knives, but my expectations are different. And my expectations are different, again, when it comes to something like uh, the Riat Knives Torrent, okay? Uh, now, some knives will exceed expectations, and that's really, really pleasant. Um, but, but that kind of, and, and by the way, we can even go further with this. You know, this is a, a mid-tech versus this being a production or, or this being a production. This is the Brian Tyne Friends TIE Fighter. Um, and my expectations of this are different than those for sure. And then we have the Jaros K2. And yet again, my expectations are different here. Okay. Now. Let me say that in general, my expectations are very high. And essentially to give you a, an overall arching principle that guides me in this is I expect any knife to function as it's designed to function. Okay, so if it's designed to lock, I expect it to lock. If it's designed to cut things, I expect it to cut things. If it's designed for outdoor work, then I expect it to hold up to that work. If it's designed for EDC, then I expect it to, to hold up to that kind of work, okay? Uh, I expect the lock to be strong enough not to break on me or fail on me. I expect the handle to be comfortable to do whatever it is that this knife is designed to do. So the, my general rule is the knife should do what it's designed to do, all right? And not all of these knives are designed to do the same thing, and not all knives in general are designed to do the same thing. But that's a good guiding principle, okay? So if your knife doesn't do what it's expected to do, you ought to be upset and you ought to be saying to the company, hey, you blew it, okay? So what if, let's, let's get into some things that are a little more specific, all right? Consider the things that are going to impact what we've been talking about, how that knife performs, how it does what it's designed to do. And I think those things that we would consider would be materials, what's it made out of? Okay, what's the blade made out of? What's the handle made out of? What are the bearings or lack of bearings made out of? The washers, all of those things. What What is this thing made out of? And do those materials, uh, do they lend themselves to whatever task we're putting them to? And then, there's the engineering side. Is the, the angle on the lock bar correct? Are the components big enough to do whatever, you know, to have enough strength to do whatever we're asking them to do? Um, I, I put design as well, kind of under engineering. Is it designed to be comfortable and attractive? Uh, those things matter. Then there's there's the issue of tolerances. Okay, so all of these knives, you can see, they're all made of a bunch of different parts. So let's let's pick on the, the Crooked River. Um, you know, if I were to take this apart, and if I had 100 Crooked Rivers to take apart, and, and I measured and weighed this scale, all right, how close would this be in weight to all the other scales out there? And if I measured 100 of them, uh, how far out would they be? What would be my acceptable uh, degree of difference? Right, so we, that's, that's called tolerances. If I measured all the pair of two blades that were out there, would they all be exactly the same thickness at the, at the back and at the tip? Would the blade, would the edge geometry be the same on all of them? Uh, and, and poor tolerances result in 
knives that have you know centering issues, they result in knives that are hard to put back together once they're taken apart, results in knives that don't lock up consistently, uh, results in knives that don't have nice actions. Okay, you can imagine, you know, in, in this pivot area, if these two scales aren't perfectly parallel to one another and, and aren't perfectly flat with flat washers, right? Let's imagine I put a washer in one side that, that was thicker. Like, see how my hand is thicker on this side? What if the washer was like that? Well, this knife would never function the way that it's intended to function, okay? So tolerances are a major, major part of this. And finally, quality control. If by accident that one bad washer does get in a knife, is someone grabbing these knives and opening it and closing it and checking it out to make sure that everything is good to go. So uh, those are the primary considerations that we're gonna look at. And we ought to understand, okay, that there's a dollar value attached to materials and engineering and design and tolerances and quality control, right? So that, that means that a knife like this, you know, to, to produce this and make a profit at $40. And by the way, let me stop here for one second. I, I am not some kind of anti-corporatist who, who doesn't think companies should you know, go into business and try to make money. That's the whole point of going into business. So don't at all get me wrong that I'm you know, somehow against any of these companies. I love knife companies because I love the knives they make and I want them all to succeed and I want them to make great products that sell lots and make them extremely successful. Okay, I really genuinely want that for knife companies because I, I like the knives they produce and if I wanna keep collecting, they've gotta keep producing, which means they've gotta stay viable as businesses. So, that said, let's, let's now come back and, and understand that, you know, CRKT, in order to produce this and make a profit on it, has to consider how much money they're gonna spend on materials and on design and on tolerances and on quality control. And, and so because this knife is, is cheaper, they're gonna have less total money to spend on all those things than this knife, okay, or, or this knife. Now, uh, I've already named all these, so I'm not gonna do that every single time. Now, the one area where this gets kind of thrown out of whack is when it comes to custom knives, because for custom makers, quality control is in their own hands and they've really got to do their due diligence and it has less to do with expenditure and more to do with time and attention, which I guess is part of expenditure. So it still has to do with expenditure, <laughs> just in a different way, okay? <clears throat> So that's, that's how I derive my expectations. Okay, what is the price of this? What is it trying to do? Is it doing those things well? Uh, and is, is it priced appropriately for what it's done? So let me pick on an example of fit and finish, okay? So let's suppose I get this, uh, you know, I think these were like 50 bucks, RAT Model 1 in D2 and laminate carbon fiber. And I get this knife and the scales and the liners are not flush, okay? Well, uh, unless it's severely bad, I'm gonna be like, yeah, no big deal, okay? Now let's suppose that I get this Benchmade and the liners and the scales are not flush. All of a sudden, I'm gonna be considerably more upset because for this price point, they should be spending the money that it takes to get it right. Okay, and so those, those are considerations that I'm going to make, but they're not the only considerations. All right, um, one thing that I take a close look at is, uh, for example, the, the quality and the ability of a knife like this. I mean, it's solid, it's well put together, and it comes in normally, and if you don't get the carbon fiber version, it comes in around 35 bucks. Okay, so if you've produced a 50 or $60 liner lock, and the action is bad, and the lockup is loose, and you know the 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 tolerances and the fit and finish are terrible. I'm not going to give you a pass on this because I know this knife can do it for thirty dollars. So you better be able to do it for sixty. All right, otherwise you really have failed. And, and so I want to bring in a couple of knives that that mess up that curve. This is the Rake uh, P. 108 sent from Rake Knives Canada for review uh, and that review will be coming up here in the not too distant future but these guys have done a great job with quality control they've done 
little things that matter like milling out the scales and, and getting the blade centering just right and getting the lock tension really good and the detent really good and so at a very reasonable price point I think these are going to be these probably go for about forty dollars so if they can do that for forty dollars then guess what that means about other forty dollar knives I'm, I'm going to suggest they get that stuff pretty darn good as well if not then they really don't have an excuse because rake can do it uh, at that price point in an even higher level uh, here is the real steel megalodon and this thing is a titanium frame lock with m390 steel the detent is amazing the action is superb it's one of the smoothest knives that i've felt and it costs about 200 bucks it might even be a little less than that Okay, so if these guys can get it right for 200 bucks, guess what? Something like this at 350 or this at, you know, closer to four something, better get it right. Now, of course, uh, the, the Riat Knives Torrent gets it really, really right. This is a joy just to flip and, and hold and use. Um, but I, I hope you see what I'm saying there, guys. I use other knives as a standard to say, hey, you know, if... If there's lots of $30 knives out there that have solid lockup and good performance, then don't try to sell me a $50 one that doesn't and say, well, you know, you gotta give me a pass because it's only 50 bucks. No pass, right? Because people can do it for 30, you better be able to do it for, uh, for more. Now, finally, I wanna talk about, so now that we've kind of clarified some of those things that inform our expectations, I want to talk about what to do about our expectations okay and that is something that the knife community as a whole can have an impact on and really all consumers everywhere can have an impact on all right <coughs> if you are making a fuss about it if you're demanding a level of of quality that is fair and consistent we've been talking about that okay then companies are going to have to respond so if you know, Rat, if Ontario Cutlery keeps getting complaints about the blade grind on their Rat Model 1s, and they don't, okay, I'm just using it as an example, or if they keep getting complaints about lock slip, uh, and people are sending back their knives and they're losing money and they're not getting sales, they're gonna have to do something about it. They're gonna have to improve it, okay? If CRKT keeps getting uh, complaints about lock stick on their bottom, which again, they don't, but I'm, I'm making an example here, uh, then guess what? They're going to have to fix it if they want to maintain their profitability, if they want to continue functioning as a business. And so when it comes to getting knives that are dysfunctional, make sure that you tell somebody. Uh, I'm a reviewer, so I get to tell lots of people, and, I, and I'm fortunate to be able to do that. But even if you're just a single consumer and you get a knife that's bad, you need to say, hey, it's bad. I took it, I'm going to take it back, and I'm either going to ask for a new one or I'm going to expect that they fix it appropriately. And so customer service becomes a big part of this, but it's not the only part. You can't make crappy knives and then just say, well, we've got a great warranty. Uh, well, <laughs> right, if I, have to re if I have to send back every single knife that I buy from a company, guess what? I'm not buying from them for very long. So quality control, it still really, really matters. Uh, but then, you know, the reality is if you make 10,000 of anything, you're going to mess up a few of them. So uh, quality control can, can only do so much. And then customer service has to take over, right? But the point I'm making here is really more for the consumer. As a consumer, and, and I guess to a degree as a, as a manufacturer, as a knife company, if you're getting a lot of complaints about something, you really need to look into it and make the appropriate changes okay because there are a lot of great knives out there i can't tell you how many knives i review and i hold it in my hand and i look at the design and i go this is a great idea just poorly implemented you know if this company would make one or two minor changes it would be amazing how much better this knife would be you know if sog could make that fake arc lock without blade play the sog aegis would probably be my favorite knife Okay, as it stands, I don't even own one, and I wouldn't encourage anyone to own one because every single one has up and down blade play, which is really frustrating. So, those are my thoughts on expectations, and those that's my advice when a knife doesn't live up to your expectations, if, by the way, they're reasonable, 
Okay, then you need to do something about it. Now, one other thing, and that is if you're like, if you want more about this and you'd like to, to hear a little more about the other side of the equation, which is customer service, then watch another video that I've done a while back called My New Knife Sucks. And I'll put a link to that here at the end. Hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll talk to you soon.